Now, if strange noises are keeping you awake at night, you needn't blame the neighbours. Debbie Padreshi is here to tell us why nature has gone wild. Debbie, you're very welcome back Thank to the programme. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to start with um, the red squirrel because last month we heard about this new virus that's threatening the, the red squirrel and you have an update for us today. First of all, tell us what's happening. Yeah, well, basically, we've found out um, the myxomatosis like um, squirrel pox virus has reached our shores, which is very bad news for the red squirrel, which is already under threat from numerous other issues. Um, and it presents itself like myxomatosis does in rabbits, so it's got weepy eyes and sores and things like that, so it's quite easy to identify mm -hmm. in, in the animals. And they end up with the, the kind of very unpleasant oozing sores on them. Um, so they're trying to get people that if you see anything like this now to, to report it back because we do need to get a handle on it as mm -hmm. soon as possible. And do we know how widespread it is? We do. I mean, we have at the moment, we've only seen three different um, sightings of it and two of them have been in Wicklow and one has been in Dublin. But it has also been seen in Northern Ireland in down in Antrim. And in one of those sites has actually wiped out 90% of the population oh, up yeah. there. So, I mean, that'll kind of show you how serious a threat this is for yeah. the squirrels now. Where, where, where did this virus come from? Um, we're not sure how it's after getting over to Ireland, but it is carried by grey squirrels. Now, they don't actually succumb to it themselves, but they do carry it. And if you think about in 2008, I believe it was, there was a population estimate of red squirrels of about 40,000 as compared to grey squirrels of about 250,000, that it's going to be very easy if the grey squirrel population has it, carrying it, to pass it on to the red squirrels. It's quite unusual to see a red squirrel anyway. Mm. These but, days, yeah. But if you do come across one and you think it has the symptoms of this virus, what mm. should you do? Um, well, don't touch it. Um, there's no cause for alarm in that it's never been proven to... It's, there's no link between it uh, con contaminating humans or anything like that. But just be safe rather than sorry. But do take a picture of it if you can and uh, pass it on to Invasive Species Database or the National Parks and Wildlife Services. Okay. Debbie, tell us about uh, two TDs who want to, they want to ban uh, hair coursing. Yeah, that's um, Maureen O'Sullivan and Claire Daly have proposed to ban coarse hair, or hair coursing even, um, as a part of the upcoming animal health bill. And basically, you can see it there on the TV, it's um, where they release hairs and you get hounds chasing them based on sight rather than on scent. And the winning hound then is the one that makes it curve off from yeah. its current course of escape. So it's, it's quite... It. You, you have to turn the hair, don't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah that... essentially. Now, turning the hair used to mean that they didn't have muzzles on and they used to be able yeah. to physically turn the hair, but now it's, they divert them off from yeah, think, their current course. I think course. it was on the rocky road to Dublin as well. Jim, this is very uh, prominent down in Tipperary. Have you ever heard of it? They had a big uh, course meeting, I suppose, it last week or the week before. It's in an Clomel, annual thing I think, in Clomel, yeah. 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 Really? yeah, it's a big no. thing in Clomel, yeah. yeah. No. Big deal. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm opposed to it. I, I, yeah. It's cruel, it's lousy. Yeah. Don't they, they train the hares beforehand? Yeah, they can take the hares um, anything for up to eight weeks before the actual competition, and we don't know where they're taking them from, or but they have to track all this information, but we don't know what effect it's having on the population. So they could be taking adult hares and leaving babies left then to starve, basically, because they're removing mm -hmm. them from the population. They take them, they keep them for eight weeks in um, enclosures with other hares while they train them then to run in straight lines and to know where the exit is when they get in mm -hmm. to the ring then with the, with the hands. And there is an alternative though, isn't there, to using the live hare? Yeah, there is, absolutely. I mean, you can use a mechanical lure like they do in racing. Uh, so there's no reason why you can't do that. But if you also look at other countries, we're kind of lagging behind the norm. Uh, Northern Ireland banned it on a permanent ban last August and they had since 2003 a rolling annual ban. It's banned in Scotland, it's banned in England, it's banned in most of Europe. So at this stage we're the ones that are, are lagging behind. Mm. Okay. Um, moving on to the red kite bird, I had to yes. read about this this morning. To, uh, to tell us a bit more about it. Well, what's happening is, um, unfortunately, it seems to always be bringing you bad news, but <laughs> they have found the ninth one dead. Um, now, they are a bird of prey that has been extinct in Ireland for about 200 years, up until 2007 when we started to reintroduce them. They came in from Wales, and over the course of the project, there's been about 160 of them introduced into Ireland. And the one that was found um, there last week was a female that was one of the first ones introduced. It had found a mate, and we knew that it had bred successfully three times. So it's really sad and disheartening to see that after having so much success, then yeah. that it can just be killed. Don't farmers claim, though, that the red kite preys on lambs? They do, and that's where we think that the misconception is coming from, because they 
are scavengers more than hunters. So they don't have um, the skill really to be hunting something of that size, they're much smaller. But if you see a red kite that's eating a lamb carcass, then you automatically make the link that it must have killed it. But that's yeah. not necessarily the case. They will eat the carcass once it's dead, but they're not necessarily the ones yeah. that are killing it. A bit like the reputation that badgers had mm -hmm. for, yeah. for carrying disease. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, a whole other drama around that one as mm -hmm. well at the moment. Um, and again, it's, the links haven't quite been proven. Yeah. No, I suppose if there was a lamb on my own plate, you'd say I killed it, Claire, would you? <laughs> 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 now, uh, the girls in the office, Debbie, have been hearing very, very strange noises <laughs> in the middle of the night. And uh, they might think it's an urban fox. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Uh, but it sounds like, one of them said that it sounds like screaming. Yeah, it sounds like a, a woman's high-pitched scream. And it actually got me last year as well. I woke up in the middle of the night to hear the screaming in my garden <laughs> and went out. I was going, what is going on? And you don't see anything either because it's actually the female fox makes this high-pitched scream during copulation. But the copulation happens below ground. So you can hear a scream, but you don't necessarily see anything. Okay. And, uh, but that's what's going on. That happens around this time of year, and then the cubs be born around March, April time. Mm -hmm. It's Jen. quite a big population of <laughs> yeah. um, urban fox. Have you heard, it? There. Have you heard it? I, I actually uh, ran out of my house, and it, I was so sure that there was a woman being attacked somewhere. Um, but nobody else seemed to care. <laughs> <laughs> so they must have had the heads up that it was a fox. Mm -hmm. My God, I'm yeah. You would hope so, anyway. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of them around. Okay, Debbie, thank you very much. Great thank to you. see you again. Lovely stuff. If you're like any of the girls in our office, and if uh, certain things are keeping you up at night, perhaps Debbie...